Hello everyone, I'm back. We are today um, doing section nine. Uh, I don't know if I'm calling it nine one. <laughs> Beginning of chapter nine, anyway. I'll figure out the name of it. Um, it's more integration um, for the time being. So we got some leftover stuff uh, that we have to do in this chapter basically. And then uh, just a couple more chapters after this. So this is uh, for more integration. This is called trig subs. You may remember, I, I know I haven't said this to everyone, but I've said to some people, remember we had these uh, like circle problems that we had to integrate. Uh, back on the final exam or before that. And we had no way to integrate it. We can only draw a picture of it and we still have no way to integrate it. Today's the day we have a way to integrate this. It's called trig substitutions. Uh, so they're kind of like little uh, tricks and ways to help you uh, simplify things basically. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna kind of give you some generalities and then, then do three examples, okay? Um, so if you see something that looks like this, so you see nine minus x squared in this problem, if you see something like this, so if you see something that looks like a square root of a squared minus x squared, you let x equal a sign. Then you just do this little substitution. It's kind of going to look and feel like a u sub a little bit, but not exactly because you, we made something in terms of x. Here we're going to take x, something in this problem, and make it something, almost like reversing it, right? So you would let x equal a sine theta. And the reason for that is it's going to get rid of the square root, watch. So here's what happens. If you let x equal a sine theta, in this substitution here, you get a squared. This x squared then becomes a squared sine squared, because this is your x. You factor out an a squared, and you get 1 minus sine squared theta, which gives you 1 minus sine squared, the identity, hence the term trig substitution. You're going to use the identities. 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. So you get a square root a squared cosine squared. You get a cosine theta. So you've changed the form of the problem. You've gotten rid of the square root. And notice, it looks like this, which you can integrate. Change the variable, so we're going to have to deal with that for sure, which I'll show you how to do that in examples. But this is the general idea of a trig sub. When you see these square roots, make the substitution. It's going to get rid of the square roots. However, we can kind of manipulate the problem just a little bit to have it look a little different. So if it's a squared plus x squared, this identity won't work because of that plus sign, you're going to have one plus sign squared. There is no identity for that. However, there is an identity for that. We'll see because in tangents, right? So if, you're, if you see a squared plus x squared, you let x equal a tangent theta. And by the way, you don't even have to see the square roots. The square roots will be there a lot of times, but even without the square root, you can still do these substitutions. You just won't have to take the square root at the end. So you can just kind of see how this one works. It becomes a squared plus a squared tangent squared. Factor out the a squared, one plus tangent squared, but that one plus tangent squared is secant squared. A squared secant squared square root is a secant theta. So you see we got rid of that square root again. Or we just change the form if you can't integrate it. Um, you still change the form, so even without the square root, it's doable. And there's one more, if the x's and the a's are switched on the minus sign, x squared minus a, so that trig sub of the b won't work, but it'll work for secants and tangents again, right? So this time you let a, x equal a secant theta. Same basic problem, that x squared becomes a squared secant squared, you factor out the x, a squared, you get secant squared minus one, which is tangent squared. So this idea, I'm about to do three examples. Stay for as many of them as you like, or as few of them as you like. Um, if you want to just go ahead and try, you could probably try now. But you're going to see there's some other stuff involved. There's more to it than just this because of the dx. I haven't even mentioned what we have to do with the dx because remember, we're changing the variables here, right? So here's my example. Um, I just want to point out that, you know, when you see these problems with the square roots, this method will work where you see a squared minus x squared or a squared plus x squared, but there might be other methods that work also, you know, so don't forget you could have u subs. Like if I put that x squared, for instance, and called it an x and just put it up top, then a u sub would work, right? Four minus x squared because you use sub. So the trick set would still work, but I think the u sub would be simpler. So just don't forget we have other ideas. So here's the process. I see four minus x squared, a squared minus x squared, okay? The a is two. By the way, most of the time they're four and nine and 16. They don't have to be, and they could be five. You can still deal with it, it just becomes a square root. So I'm gonna let x equal two sine theta. Now here's the part I left out before. I have to do something with this dx, right? Because if I just substitute, all of these x's are gonna turn into thetas, but then I still have the dx. So I have to have a d theta. So the way you get the d theta 
Once you make your substitution, x equals 2 sine theta, immediately dx is the derivative of that, right? It's 2 cosine theta d theta. So this, oops, this is going to get substituted there. And then my x's are all going to turn into uh, 2 sine theta. So let me show you how that looks. So um, there was this extra x squared floating around also, which may or may not be there. Another problem. So this is the substitution that I showed you up top, right? 4 minus x squared. x squared, x is 2 sine theta, so that becomes 4 sine squared theta. But we also have uh, the x, which is 2 sine theta, so that x squared becomes 4 sine squared theta. So I've substituted everything. So notice this x squared became 4 sine squared. This square root of 4 minus x squared became this, and the dx became this. Looks ugly, but now it's just trig functions. It's all trig functions. We're going to simplify that square root. And then you might remember we had a whole chapter on trig functions. No, it really wasn't a chapter, a whole couple sections on trig functions. Cosine to the fourth, sine squared, secant to the fifth, tangent cubed. Those sorts of problems are going to pop up again in this one. So my next step was I just simplified inside that square root. So I factored out the 4, we left me with 1 minus sine squared theta, uh, which then changed into, oh, I kind of skipped a step there, sorry. Uh, this became 4 cosine squared theta, right? Square root, which then became 2 cosine theta. So this 2 cosine theta is this 2 cosine theta, and this one from the square root. Those cancel. Factor out a 4, and I'm just left with 1 fourth times 1 over sine squared. So at this point, you can wind up with anything. It's going to have trig functions in it, all right? It's going to have trig functions in it, but you could um, wind up with anything. So now you might have to do your trig tricks or other things, right? This one's pretty straightforward, I hope. I'm going to rewrite that 1 over sine squared as a cosecant squared, okay? And then um, I'm going to integrate the cosecant squared, and I got negative 1 fourth cotangent theta. Yee, yippee, I'm done, right? No, not quite, because remember, I have an issue, right? My answer's in thetas. So I got to get back to x's. So what we now need to do is go back to my original substitution and put back in. So remember, my original substitution was x is 2 sine theta, which means sine theta is x over 2. Okay. Um, so what you do at this point, because I need cotangent theta, right? So I can show you the answer, but I'll show you where it comes from here in just a second. I'm just going to draw a little triangle here, actually. There's my theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse, which makes this the square root of, let's try that again. That's not the hypotenuse. Whoops. You guys knew that, right? <laughs> opposite over hypotenuse, which makes the adjacent squared 4 minus x squared. And so when I look for cotangent, cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So it's this over t over uh, x, sorry, which is what you see right there, yeah. All right, so that's one example. I'm going to do two more. Again, take them or leave them. Um, that was a good example. But anything, here's the thing, anything can pop up in these problems. Now, once you do the substitutions, now you're back to old stuff. And then you have to substitute at the end. Those are the main things to remember. So I got two more examples. I will do both of them. Stay as long or as little as you like. So um, let's start here. One square root of four. I'm going to just kind of go kind of quickly. I know you can always pause if you need to. So I see uh, two tangent theta for this one. Okay. Which, oops, I lost my dx, which means my dx, the square root of tangent, is secant squared theta d theta. So that's the dx on top, two secant squared theta d theta. My substitution is 4 plus x squared, which is 4 tangent squared theta. So I get 2 secant squared theta d theta on the bottom. 4 times, I'm going to kind of skip a step here if that's all right. It's 1 plus tangent squared, and 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So now um, 2 secant squared theta d theta over 2 secant theta. Choose cancel, and I'm left with secant theta. Remember, I warned you about this one uh, last chapter, or last semester, that this is a memorized one might come up. This is actually the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. 
plus C, of course. But now I got to substitute back in. So we go back to my original substitution, which X equals two tangent theta. Tangent theta is X over two. So I draw a little triangle of my theta. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which makes this X squared plus four or four plus X squared like it was in the beginning. Now I just find the proper trig functions, right? Natural log of secant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be hypotenuse over adjacent plus tangent theta, which we got right here, right? X over two. So again, the point here is anything can happen at this point, right? Anything could show up. So you gotta remember your old integrals. We got one more. Square root of x squared minus nine over x. I guess this is the last trig function, right? The one we haven't done. So we're gonna go three secant theta this time for this one, which makes dx equal three secant theta tangent theta d theta. So substitute that square root of x squared minus nine becomes nine secant squared theta minus nine. The dx becomes three secant theta tangent theta d theta all over x, which is three secant theta. Simplify nine secant squared, so the nine factors out, you get secant squared minus one, secant squared minus one is tangent squared, so you get nine tangent squared, which is three tangent theta, times three secant theta tangent theta d theta, all over three secant theta. Cancel, cancel. I'm gonna factor out that three, leaves me with a tangent squared. So again, Little trick here, tangent squared. You might remember my saying from last period, last semester, secant squareds and tangent squareds. One of them is good, one of them is bad. We can integrate secant squared because it's the derivative of tangent, but we can't integrate tangent squared. So we want to use the identity for this to get it to secant squareds. And just if you forget, just to remind you, go back to this identity, divide by cosine squared. And you get tangent squared plus one equals secant squared, which means your tangent squared is secant squared minus one, right? Secant squared theta minus one. All righty. Now we're ready to integrate. The three can be factored out. Integral of secant squared, antiderivative of that is tangent. And this is a one, but remember it's d theta, so it's theta. The integral of that one is a theta. Plus c, of course. Go back to my substitution. X equals three secant theta, right? I hope, yep. Oops, I didn't need that d theta out there. Sorry about that, but it popped up in the last one. So we draw a little picture, my theta again. S oops, secant theta equals x over three. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine again. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is uh, hypotenuse over adjacent, which makes this the square root of x squared minus nine. By the way, this will always wind up being what we uh, had in our original problem, right? The square root of x squared minus nine. Ready to write up a final answer. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent minus theta. So all I can do with theta is write this as secant inverse. So theta is secant inverse of x over three. Hopefully those three examples helped a little bit. This is like a lot like other integrals. You kind of got to just do them. The, the new concept isn't really that hard. You have the extra step of uh, having to plug back in at the end. But the problem could be what shows up in the middle of these integrals, right? Do you remember how to integrate tangent squared like this? Or what if it's secant to the third, tangent to the fifth? Do you remember those? That sort of thing. So. so that's it on what's called trig substitutions. See you in class.